This stormy setup is now looking worse as the jet stream is kicking into high gear, and this could mean a tornado outbreak with severe weather from the plains towards the Midwest Monday. This video has all the details on that storm, plus what you need to know about its flooding chances into some parts of the country. I've also got details on this longer range storm that I'll be tracking later this week. All those details right here. As you watch this video, drop any comments, questions, concerns you have right down below in that section, but let's go ahead and get right into this video, taking a look at the future radar for the next few days using the European model. Just a quick two-minute overview of what is actually going on and what is going to trigger this possible severe weather outbreak into our Monday. We've already been seeing some severe weather and rounds of flooding ongoing over, especially the South Central Plains. As you can see with this model, though, as we go into our Monday early morning, we're going to have rainfall extending with a first low pressure system all the way as far north as Minnesota and Wisconsin, but that second low pressure system that's forming right down there in Texas. That is the main storm that's going to trigger our tornado outbreak that we could very well see in eastern parts of the state, through eastern parts of Oklahoma, eastern Kansas, and then pushing towards Arkansas, Missouri, maybe even other parts of the Midwest into our Monday afternoon. In fact, let's go ahead and play things out. In addition to the flooding chance we'll have as these rounds of showers and storms progress over these same areas, we'll have to watch the beginning chances of a tornado outbreak in central Kansas, central Oklahoma, down to the Red River Valley and north central Texas. This is as early as around the midday time frame Monday. Storms will fire up in the western parts of Texas and Oklahoma. They'll be moving east by this point, and we could already have some tornadoes on the ground by midday. That being said, the best chance for tornadoes will really come as we go beyond the mid-afternoon time frame. So once we get past around 2, 3 p.m. Central Time and start pushing towards 4, 5, 6, that's when we'll probably have quite a bit of possible tornado warnings in parts of eastern Oklahoma, western Arkansas, and surrounding spots, as we will even have the potential for some EF2 or greater aka significant tornadoes pushing through this region. A lot of the reason that threat is elevated is because you can see the center of this low pressure system is expected to track just through northern Kansas and northern Missouri. Anywhere from right around where that low is and just south of it, we're going to have very strong and not only mid to upper level jet winds, but also lower level jet stream winds. And I'll show you more of that setup in just a minute and how that will be favorable for tornadoes. Here we go into our Tuesday though. You can see the front pushing east. By this point, the main threat will mostly just be isolated flooding, but still, you know, a messy commute into our Tuesday evening over a lot of of the Midwest, pushing all the way back down to the Mid-South and parts of Arkansas and Louisiana. And then as we go to the end of this week, this storm becomes pretty much irrelevant. And I'll talk about the longer range system later in this video. By the way, I wouldn't be talking about all these systems if it weren't for the awesome weather model maps that I get from Weather Bell. There's a free trial link below to them in the description to this video, so I highly recommend you check that out. Also, if you're new to my channel right here on YouTube, I deliver consistent, accurate, and educational updates for you in about a 12 to 15 minute video length normally. If you like that kind of content and want more in the future, make sure you're hitting that subscribe button right down below. But here we go talking about the severe weather outbreak and possible tornado outbreak that we will have as we go into our Monday and Monday night. This is my level 1 through level 7 severe risk zone scale for our Monday and Monday night, and you can see that... Anywhere from Wisconsin all the way back down to South Central Texas will at least have some level of chance for a few severe thunderstorms, but once you get into those dark greens and then especially the yellow and orange shades that you see on your screen, that is where we have the best chance for some dangerous severe storms during this time frame, and that is especially going to include northeast Texas into eastern and central Oklahoma, northwestern Arkansas, southeast Kansas, and southwest Missouri. This is where we could see scattered and numerous damaging winds, hail, and even the possibility of some tornadoes, and those tornadoes could even reach that caliber of EF2 strength. That is considered a significant tornado by the Storm Prediction Center's standards. Here we go. Let's take a look at that setup using the jet stream here, about 15 to 20,000 feet on up into the atmosphere. This is your mid-level jet with the European model. As we go to the end of our Monday and into our early two Tuesday, we're going to see a very strong front and the associated jet stream energy making its way here out of the southwest U.S. and into the south central plains. You can see that front really lining up. It'll be coming through central Texas, central Oklahoma, eastern Kansas, and up there towards Missouri and Iowa just around the time that these storms are finishing up. And it's really going to be what forces them to push from west to east throughout the day. Notice that flow in the atmosphere. It is from southwest to northeast. That's going to be big because now that we're looking at this low-level jet stream, I'm about to zoom in on an area where the winds are actually moving in a different direction. You see all these yellows, oranges, and reds really over eastern Texas, eastern Oklahoma, those same areas that have the highest threat for significant tornadoes that I've listed. The flow in these areas is going to be directly from south to north closer to the surface. This is your low-level jet, as I mentioned. When you've got the low-level jet moving south to north, and it is pretty strong, and then you've got an upper-level jet that's more southwest to northeast, that is some veering of winds with height that is called wind shear, and that is going to really increase our chance for some significant tornadoes over this region, especially if we compare it with some daytime heating.
Let's use a model to play out what it thinks will happen. This is just a solution. This is not exactly what's going to happen. I almost guarantee it. So do not trust your life with what I show here. But it did a pretty good job today. It's showing all these storms that have been ongoing. We've had a severe weather outbreak today on our Sunday over some parts of the South Central Plains just as a result of our first low pressure system that's cutting on through. The next one's not out here just yet, though, and it is going to be making its way into the western Texas and western Oklahoma overnight tonight. Look at those impacts already possibly in some parts of west central Texas into the Texas Panhandle and then I think especially into west central Oklahoma if we go with this model. In the early morning hours in a place like Woodward, Oklahoma over to Enid and knocking on the door of Oklahoma City we could already have a feisty line beginning to develop. It is going to be along this boundary as it kind of slowly moves east honestly throughout the day that we're going to see some broken storms as well as some supercell storms and those are the ones that can produce tornadoes. There's that cold front and the uh, over Overall boundary that these storms are going to be continuing to fire along even if some dissolve others will form up along this boundary by the midday time frame this HRRR model is indicating that from Wichita through Oklahoma City down to the west side of Dallas we're going to have a broken line of storms probably some isolated gusty winds and maybe even a tornado or two possible as well as some hail already by this point but the threats only go up as the afternoon continues so once we get towards Wichita starting to move east of there down towards places like Tulsa, kind of between Tulsa and Oklahoma City, down to Dallas. This model says around 1 to 2 p.m., okay, we're going to have some storms continuing there, and these will begin to tap more into that low-level jet that's actually feistier in the eastern parts of these states and in the western parts of Missouri and Arkansas. This broken line of storms is going to become very strong. We're probably going to see some of the biggest gusty winds of 50, 60, 70 miles per hour coming in with some decent amounts of those reports. By this time, this is 3, 4, 5 p.m. into our Monday afternoon and evening. Also, notice this line still has some gaps in it, and that is where we're going to have a little bit more inflow or just kind of the winds trying to enter into these storms. We could definitely see some rotation get going, especially along the leading edge of these kinds of lines, and we could definitely have some embedded tornadoes uh, getting in the mix. And again, those could be significant tornadoes of EF2 plus caliber, so make sure you know your plan. It is a work day. There might be people commuting on these highways into the evening hours, so please make sure you know what's going on and have a communication plan with your family about this. By the time you go through 8, 9, 10, p.m. Monday evening. Overall, the severe weather threat is going to turn more isolated, where you can see this line going. If you live in any of those areas where this line will be, we'll still be watching a flood threat and an isolated severe storm threat even into Speaking the night, of though. flooding, let's go ahead and take a look at the total precipitation expected throughout the rest of this event. Using the European model, this is not going to be an exact, you know, measurement, just like with that HRRR. Those storms are not going to be exactly where it shows. But overall, this is good guidance to show that in these yellow, orange, and reddish shaded areas, especially the maroon zones down there towards Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Missouri, we're going to have a decent chance of some flooding. Most of these spots will pick up an additional one to three inches of rain just through the next 24 to 36 hours from when I'm filming this on our Sunday evening. But in some localized cases, especially where you see those darker colors, we will have the chance of picking up more like six to eight inches of rain. And I wouldn't even rule out 10 inches in a very isolated spot there, especially in western Arkansas. We're going to see the storms train even into our early Tuesday. Keep an eye out for the flooding there, but overall the threat will go down as the storm weakens while it moves east. So let's go ahead and take a look at what is going to be on the way a little bit further down the line using that future radar from our same good old European model. As we go into the end of our Wednesday, it's kind of a transition day. We're behind our most recent front. We've got a little rain down there towards Georgia and Florida, sure. And that's actually going to be in connection to a little bit of a tropical system moving into the Gulf. I'll let you know if that storm becomes a hazard, but overall it looks like it's going to die before it can make its way to the northern part of the Gulf and to the Gulf Coast, or at least it's going to die down enough that it's not a significant hazard. Let's go ahead and take a look back to the west, though, because this is going to be the main feature I'm concerned about by the time we go towards the Thursday time frame. Overall, we've still got high pressure, but there's going to be a little low sliding into parts of Colorado and northeast New Mexico. Associated showers and storms probably sub-severe overall, but maybe some isolated hail into west Texas Thursday evening. This low is going to be associated with some strong jet stream energy that's eventually going to pulse into this region, though. Sure, you'll see the hype. There's going to be people calling this like a mega trough and all sorts of stuff. Let's calm down a little bit and let's just kind of assess the situation. Sure, it looks like we'll have some storms late Friday. They could be severe here in western Texas, western Oklahoma, western Kansas, and maybe even pushing towards the central parts of those states as we go into our Friday night. But the details remain very uncertain, so don't let the hype get to you. Let's not get in a panic right now about this next system. This guidance from the European model takes this storm up towards Nebraska with the eastern side having the best chance for storms, so maybe that will include Minnesota and Iowa if we stick with this into our Saturday evening. The GFS model overall follows this, but it kind of moves it a little bit quicker at times. Towards the Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, back down to the Mid-South, we might have some heavy showers and storms towards our Sunday, November 10th, but this is all really a maybe situation because we're still five to seven days out from the worst of the storm. I put the word worst in quotes. It might not have really that much of significant impacts. 
but it's really good, just going to be a time will tell kind of situation. Let me show you why this is going to deserve some attention, though. Look at that jet stream energy really doing a full 360s, trying to spin around there out of the southwest U.S. and here towards the plains as we go to the end of this week. Thursday, not much energy kicking out, so that's why I'm not too worried about any sort of severe weather Thursday or a major threat anyway in western Texas. But once we start getting this energy kicking out, we'll have those storms in western parts of Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas late Friday. These storms could certainly be very feisty because you notice all of that jet stream energy with this trough or dig in the jet stream is on that eastern side and even trying to wrap around to the northeastern side of the low. That is what you call a negatively tilted trough. That is a little bit more of a rare trough when you get it kind of vertically oriented like that. And that overall look will continue even as it makes its way towards the upper Midwest late Saturday heading into early Sunday. And that's why it deserves some attention. Just no panic yet. I'll keep you updated right here on the channel, of course, if anything changes and it looks even more significant. But let's go ahead and take a look at how that system at place with the mid-level pattern and overall what our temperature anomalies are going to be in the coming days too. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about specific temperatures in this video, but you can see we're remaining with the pattern we've been seeing for the last several days and really honestly weeks now in the eastern and central U.S., you get a storm to cut on through, but then we just see the warmth return right behind it. 5, 10, 15 degree above average conditions with this ridge or pushing up of the jet stream by the time we go into our Thursday, November 7th, around, say, 3 to 4 p.m. Meanwhile, pushing up against it, we are going to have that storm moving in from the west. That storm is just going to interact even more with this warmer than average air that's going to be right out ahead of it. I mean, look at how that ridge intensifies in the upper Midwest and Great Lakes late Friday going towards our Saturday. And again, once you got a stronger storm system, a negatively tilted trough like I just showed you working into some warmer than average air, it deserves some attention. And that is why I spent a solid three to four minutes here talking about this longer range pattern that we're going to see towards the end of this week. If you have any questions about the near-term possible tornado outbreak or the longer range activity, make sure you're dropping those right down below in the comments section to this video. Make sure you're also hitting that subscribe button and the like button if you have not already and you want more consistent, accurate, and educational updates in the future. But like I said, I'd love to hear from you down below. Leave anything down in that comment section. I'll catch you in the next update, probably Tuesday or more likely Wednesday. One Nation Web.